Stay with VPR for All Things Considered, beginning at 5. Support for programming comes from Bistro de Margot, Burlington. Available for private wedding parties and rehearsal dinners this summer. Reservation information at bistrodemargot.com. And Sun Common, helping build Vermont's clean energy future with solar for homes and businesses and Tesla Powerwall backup batteries. suncommon.com. I'm Christopher Kimball. You're listening to Milk Street Radio. Right now, it's time to chat with J.M. Hirsch about this week's recipe, Greek meatballs with tomato sauce. J.M., how are you? I'm great. So, I was going to go to Crete, uh, (laughs) but you took my place at the last minute. I did. I did. Uh, Thank you. Um, Mm -hmm. But you had some great food, and you came across Greek meatballs with tomato sauce, sort of a meze dish, I guess which I did not think was going to be one of the stars of the trip, turned out to be exactly that. So what are they and where did you have them? Yeah, you know, it was an unexpected find. I did not actually go looking for food. I went looking for wine, frankly. I I met a lovely couple, Alexander Manousakis and her husband, Afshin Malavi, and they run a a family-owned winery. You know, it's a very small operation, and they do terrific wines, actually some of the best wines I had on the island. They just invited me over for lunch, and they just started rolling out all this amazing food. And I got to say, you know as well as I do from your travels that the magic is in the moment. You know, the food, of course, has to be good, and it was. But it's in the magic of meeting people, becoming friends, drinking wine, sharing food, sharing stories. And that's exactly what this afternoon was. It was really just a wonderful time. You know, we started off with this Cretan salad uh, that's kind of their version of almost an Italian panzanella, like a bread salad. And then we moved on to these giganti beans cooked in a tomato sauce. It was phenomenal. And then we moved on from there to a beef stew with tomato and orzo. It was lovely. But, as you say, the star wore these meatballs. They're kind of oblong-shaped meatballs called sutsukakia. What I loved about them is they had a lovely, like, kind of brown crust on the outside because they are browned in a skillet before they're simmered in a tomato sauce. But they were so wonderfully spiced And, you know, they had garlic and mint, oregano, cumin, paprika, grated onion, and they just came together so nicely. And then they were cooked in this really bright, kind of naturally sweet tomato sauce that they had done very little to. And and that's what I loved about it. You know, they let the tomatoes kind of speak for themselves and act as an accent to these well-spiced meatballs. It was just a wonderful combination. Well, as you travel around the world, you can eat chicken soup. (laughs) <laughs> almost everywhere, mm-hmm. and some form of meatballs. <laughs> and the way they spice and prepare them tell you so much about where you are in the world. Right, exactly. It's so interesting that there are these common recipes, but they're actually very different. Right. Well, everybody kind of puts their own inflection on it. And in this case, you know, it's a the tradition is a combination of both beef and lamb. And the combination of, you know, that kind of Lamb has more of a presence and, you know, a richness to it. And it really worked so well with the oregano and the cumin and the paprika. And it was very different. Like, you know, we're used to kind of the red sauce, American, Italian meatballs. And this was such a very different presence on the plate. It was really nice. A simple recipe, but probably one of the best you had on Crete. Uh, Greek meatballs with tomato sauce. Good as a meze, good as a main course. Thank you, Jam. Thank you. You can find this recipe for Greek meatballs with tomato sauce at 177milkstreet.com. This is Milk Street Radio. Now it's time for some culinary wisdom from one of our listeners. Hi, Milk Street. My name is Stacy. My tip is for anyone who makes lots of drop cookies. I'm on the shorter side, and I have a tall stainless steel mixer bowl. Repeatedly going from the bowl to the cookie sheet with my scoop feels very awkward. I have my elbow sticking up in the air, and it's just weird. So to make it more efficient, I wad up my kitchen towel, and I make a ramp with it for the bowl. I tilt my bowl on the towel ramp, and now going in and out of the bowl is much easier because the mouth of the bowl faces me and not the ceiling. And this might be helpful if you're making cookies with children, too. Cheers. If you'd like to share your own cooking tip here on Milk Street Radio, please go to 177milkstreet.com slash radio tips. Next up, it's Dan Pashman. Hey, Dan, what's up? Well, Chris, I'm thinking right now about sandwiches, and I'm a little bit perturbed. 
are we doing the definition of a sandwich now or something? No, 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 no. We no. moved on. I, I I love sandwiches. I'm not a vegetarian, but I do sometimes like veggie sandwiches without meat in them. Especially like if I'm like, I don't know, at an airport or some random place where I just need some right. food and I'm like, I don't really want the turkey sandwich that's been sitting out in this terminal for God knows how long. <laughs> And I want a veggie sandwich, and I'm very upset because I feel like, at least in many places in America, there are only two kinds of vegetarian sandwiches that anyone seems like anyone's ever heard of. You know what they are, right? There's the one that's like grilled eggplant, red right. pepper, and onion with mozzarella and maybe like balsamic vinegar. Or it's like hummus, feta, olives, red onion. Right. Now, those are both fine sandwiches, but like there's so many other options. And... I'm just tired of those two, and I want more like run-of-the-mill sandwich shops to put a little more effort into having better vegetarian sandwiches. Now, why do you think this is? Because uh, vegetables and vegetarian and vegan cooking have become so popular the last five years. It just hasn't. It's like trickle down economics and never trickle down to the sandwich department. Yeah, or I, I think it's probably mostly laziness. It's it's like you know these these places say, well, there's more vegetarians now, more demand for vegetarian food, so we need a vegetarian option. Well, there's that one or the other one. That's what everyone does. So just throw one of those on the menu. And it's like there's this mentality that like by simply having a vegetarian option, no matter how lame and uninspired it is, you've checked that box. And you're, yet, from a business perspective and a culinary perspective, I think that those places are missing an opportunity to be known for great vegetarian sandwiches. Okay, so uh, Milk Street's now hiring you to okay. be the vegetarian sandwich consultant. Oh, I, what this is the do? role I was born to play. All right, first thing, <laughs> one thing that should be in more sandwiches, broccoli. Oh, All right, I, I didn't believe it till I saw it at the number seven sub shop in New York City that it would even work. I, I thought, how do they even keep it in the sandwich? But if you get a nice big sub roll, not sliced bread, but a sub roll, yeah. it will stay in there. It'll stay in there because you don't eat it. <laughs> no, I love That's I why. love broccoli. I think it's one of the best vegetables. I love broccoli. I eat it like three times a week. But okay, what else do you put with it? At the number seven sub shop, they do it with pickled lychee and like ricotta salada. It's very huh. nice. I okay. did my own version at home recently. I had some leftover charred broccoli from the night before with a nice, yeah. you know, nice crisp charred edges. And I happen to have a leftover half a loaf of a semolina bread from an Italian bakery. Yeah. I have this sheep and goat milk cheese spread in a jar. And then I also had some feta cheese. And then I really got a little fancy, which is not like me, especially no. at lunch during the week. I toasted some pine nuts. And let me tell you something, Chris. This sandwich is crunchy. It's salty. It's creamy. It's tangy. It has every flavor and texture you could ever want in a sandwich, and it's 100% vegetarian. Here's Dan Pashman, who argues about whether hot dogs is a sandwich. Right. And, and now he's toasting <laughs> pine nuts for his lunch with his semolina bread. Dan, yeah. Dan what's, what's going on? Look, the mood comes over me from time to time. I'm not a person who puts a ton of effort into most of my meals. I mean, I, mean, I, I care a lot, but I also am always, you know, like, ideally trying to find maximum deliciousness without spending hours and hours on it. Right. Can I tell you another another broccoli one that I do sometimes? Yeah. So I'll take a flour tortilla, a little shredded mozzarella, throw yeah. it in the microwave uh, so the tortilla is soft and doughy and chewy and the cheese melts. And then again, leftover roast broccoli and spicy chili crisp. Uh, now that, okay, now you got me. I okay. love, you know, chili crisp is having its day. That's right. So, okay, right. so our, one last question. Do you have a non-broccoli vegetarian sandwich? Um, no. <laughs> so you should have titled love, this segment, How to Eat Broccoli Between Bread. Well, yeah, but let's make broccoli the star of the vegetarian sandwiches. Enough of these mediocre grilled vegetables. You put grilled red pepper in a sandwich, you taste nothing but red pepper. Right. And and the hummus and feta, you know, one, like, yeah, it's fine. I like hummus, but like, that's not a, that's not a lunch. That's a snack. Okay. You, you <laughs> fill this sandwich with broccoli and some kind of cheese on a big hearty sub roll. Like that's something that I can stick my teeth into and I can get behind. Next time I'm in an airport, I want a broccoli sandwich. I think you're right, but you've forgotten the, the key ingredient. What? Prosciutto. Oh, that would be very good. <laughs> Dan Pashman, uh, if you're going to have a vegetarian sandwich, consider the broccoli. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. That was Dan Pashman, host of the Sporkful Food Podcast.
That's it for today. You know, we've produced over 200 episodes of Milk Street Radio over the years. You can find them all on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, MilkStreetRadio.com, or wherever you find your podcasts. To explore more about Milk Street, please go to 177MilkStreet.com. There you can download our recipes, watch our TV show, learn about our magazine, and our latest cookbook, The World in a Skillet. You can also find us on Facebook at Christopher Kimball's Milk Street, on Instagram and Twitter at 177 Milk Street. We'll be back next week with more food stories and kitchen questions. Thanks, as always, for listening. Christopher Kimball's Milk Street Radio is produced by Milk Street in association with GBH. Co-founder, Melissa Baldino. Executive producer, Annie Sinsabaugh. Senior editor, Melissa Allison. Producer, Sarah Clapp. Assistant producer, Caroline Davis, with production help from Debbie Paddock. Additional editing by Sydney Lewis. Audio mixing by Jay Allison and Atlantic Public Media in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. Theme music by Chew Bob Crew. Additional music by George Brindle Egloff. Christopher Kimball's Milk Street Radio is distributed by PRX. This American Life is next here on listener-supported Vermont Public Radio, 88.9 WVBA Brattleboro, 88.5 WVPA St. Johnsbury, 89.5 WVPR Windsor, 107.9 WVPS Burlington, 88.7 WRVT Rutland, 94.3 WBTN FM Bennington, and on your smart speaker. Support for programming comes from you, our contributing listeners, as well as Simon Pierce Restaurant, Queechee, now open for lunch and dinner with reservations required, also offering takeout Wednesdays through Sundays. And Efficiency Vermont, whose online marketplace provides customer reviews and compares the most efficient products available. EfficiencyVermont.com slash shop. Good afternoon. It's 3 o'clock.